que coisa mais linda, mais cheia de... Yeah, it's one of the biggest controversies of the games. Welcome to another edition of Fun and Games. I'm Mossy, he's Robbo, and I'm urging you to come with us, Australian. I tell you what, Robbo, cricket, is it a real sport? Oh, Mossy, I was hoping you wouldn't mention it, mate. Yes, well, it is a real sport, and a real result is the fact that we've had our backsides spanked by the Poms over there in the Ashes, and, mate, uh, the fourth test didn't last long. The last couple haven't lasted long at all, and the debacle of the Aussies getting bundled out for 60 runs Mate, with all this going on, one thing that has been good is to see that former captain Ricky Ponding is remaining positive. Came up short, but one thing they have got to play for now is a lot of pride and see what they can salvage out of this game. I mean, it's not impossible to win the game from here. Now, mate, uh, let's turn our attention to the, the good things going on in Australian sport. Of course, it's the Wallabies. And uh, great to see them get up a, a win over the, uh, the All Blacks. Yes, definitely. And one fellow that loves his Wallabies, I think he was down there mixing it with the boys after their win, was Josh Cal Callan. And we can cross to Josh Cal now for the Games News Update. Thanks, boys. And here we are again on the Olympic News Desk. And first up, there must be something in the water at the Campbell household because for the first time, super sis sisters have superseded one another on the world stage. Bronte, the 100-metre world champion in the freestyle, coming over the top of Kate, who had the title previously. Bronte also doubled it up in the 50 metres, and together they're on top of the podium in the 4x100-metre women's freestyle relay. Fantastic effort. Part of seven gold for the Aussies over there in Russia. Still in the water and over in Russia, the World Water Polo Championships were on as well. The Stingers and the Sharks doing well, for making the top eight. The Stingers fourth, the women for the Aussies, and eighth for the boys, the Sharks, and uh, they'll be looking to continue that momentum into Rio. Still in the water and Aaron Royal, despite all the pollution there in Rio at Copacabana Beach, has managed to qualify, book his ticket to Rio next year in the triathlon with a top 10 finish. Well done to the Novocastrian. Now, not to Rio, but a little bit further afield. In Tokyo 2020, there are eight sports that are pleading their case to, for inclusion at that Olympic Games. They are baseball, softball is a combined bid, karate, squash, surfing, 10-pin bowling, roller sports, sport climbing, and not sushi, wushu. All of those guys are hoping to get the tick from the ROC and they will be announced just before Rio in August next year. And in 10 years' time, there may even be another sport on the agenda after the IOC, believe it or not, have ratified Ultimate Frisbee as an official sport. I don't know about you boys, but it could be a new revolution. Back to you. Yes, thanks very much, Cal. Now, Robbo, massive, massive uh, week it was last week. Just around the corner is the Rio de Janeiro Olympics. Less than one year to go, mate. We got down there to the uh, Australian Olympic Committee press conference, and it was very, very impressive indeed. And I tell you what, come with us, Australia, is the hashtag they want to do. And they're also looking at a complete change of the logo, changing things up, getting up with the, the likes of England and also uh, Russia. Yes, come with us indeed, Mossy, that's what it's all about. And coming with us was Jumpy on the train down to Sydney, and that was great. We got to rub shoulders with the likes of Chef Demission, Kitty Chiller, um, and, some, and Sally Pearson was down there. Some of the big uh, players, I guess, of the AOC movement. We got to uh, share a, a fantastic morning down there, Mossy. It was a huge one-year-to-go party. Uh, so much excitement in the room. But, mate, this, uh, this come with me, come with us, sorry, I would get a bit excited if you a bit carried away. Come with us. Well, don't Jeez, worry, Geez, that uh, captured the hearts and minds of everyone in the room, and I'm sure ever ever since it's got out there. The new logo too, Mossy, that, that was intriguing. Well, it definitely was. We had a chance to catch up with Fiona Zhang, who is the CEO of the AOC, and uh, here's what she had to say about the, uh, the new logo and potentially Jumpy Inspired. Looking at uh, the logo, you have a kangaroo and an emu. Is, I understand you actually went and studied these animals in the in the wild. Is this correct? We do. Well, maybe not the wild, but we did take a little trip to Taronga Zoo. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just to make sure we had the perfect, uh, you know, the perfect silhouette of the right kangaroo and our little emu, that they were. Um, indicative of our athletes and energetic and upright and moving forward. Well, is it true that you actually modelled the kangaroo on Jumpy? 
Uh, I'm not sure I could uh, I could say that that's true. <laughs> well, there you go, Robbo. I'm taking that as absolute fact that Jumpy has inspired the new movement. Now, let's move on, mate. Um, Joe Ingalls, a big fella. He was actually interviewed down there uh, by a guy called Dickie Knee. Well, mate, this was a little bit intimidating. Joe Ingalls, what is he, 8 foot 8? He's a, he's a giant of a fella. He uh, plies his trade over there in the States in the NBA, but he's back home uh, and about to go out. For the boomers very shortly, but as you said, we had a chance to catch up with him, and I think my neck is still a little bit sore from that interview, but let's see how it went. You guys are facing off the possibility of getting to what will be your third game. You've got to, you've got to beat the Tall Blacks. You're feeling confident about that? Um, I am, yeah. I think we've got a, a team together that, that um, I have no doubt will win. Um, obviously, we need to play well and, and do our part of it, but um, yeah, very confident the guys will get the job done, and um, yeah, then we'll, we'll obviously switch our focus to Rio after that, but um, yeah, we've all got a pretty big year in between that with our club teams and all that. So it's a still far away, but today kind of brings it um, a bit more reality of how close it is. You've been talked up here today at the press conference, the Boomers, the, you know, the best chance of a medal in, in decades. The 96 team was talked about with Hammer Heel in there, but, uh, mate, all these NBA stars, including yourself, you, you guys must be pretty excited at getting over there and showing the world how good you are. Yeah, yeah. Um, like you said, I think we've—I mean—we've been close since I've been involved, but but crossed over against America twice. I think those teams in the past were close as well, and, and obviously just missed out. Um, but I think the, the team we've got is pretty exciting, and um, since I've been involved, probably our best chance, I think. And um, obviously that adds a little bit of pressure, but it's also exciting because we haven't been really in that position. So um, we've got a lot of guys that have played big games and high levels. So um, from our side, there won't be any nerves about it. We'll, we'll go out and do what we got to do. Um, starting with obviously this Oceana series and, and then switch the focus to Rio after that. And what a champion there, Joe Ingalls. Great to catch up with him. Actually slipped the Naked Runners headband on him later on as well. And a good luck to all the Boomers as well as the Australian women's basketball team, the Opals, taking on the Tall Blacks and the Tall Ferns for a place to get over there and qualify for the Rio Olympics Mossy. So uh, good luck to them this weekend. Absolutely, mate. Uh, it wasn't just uh, all about the boomers, but the water polo, mate. A lot of action going on over there at the FINA World Championships in Kazan in Russia. And, uh, mate, a, a lot of things going down. Yeah, yeah. look, I followed this very closely, Mossy. The, uh, the, Australia, the Aussie Sharks, as they're known, that's the men's team. And then you've got the Stingers, that's the women's team. And, uh, look, I love their work, Mossy. One thing that strikes me is just... The uniforms. I love the uniforms. And Mossy, name me another sport where you get to wear a dressing gown as your uniform. Badminton. Do they? I've, I've, I've missed that. I've missed that entirely. But uh, look, water polo, they, they, they get up in the morning. What do they put on? A gown. What do they wear to breakfast? A gown. What do they get on the bus in later on? Jeans. And a gown. And then later on, they get to the pool and they're back in their gown again. Look, it's very, very practical. I've adopted it myself this week, Mossy. I think I'll probably wear this gown all the way to Rio. Um, look, I think if badminton, badminton is adopting it, that's fantastic. And I, and I put it out there to other sports to do the same thing. Is it a part of the 100-piece kit, the team of power? Surely everyone gets a gown. We'll have to chat to Kitty and, we'll, uh, and see. We will. Now, on the side of the pool, Mossy, uh, a little incident that happened. This had me very, very concerned. Coach... Uh, Eddie Dennis, well, he was uh, unsteady, Eddie, and we can see here a little celebration after the win against the Netherlands, and Eddie almost uh, well, did himself a mischief here, but luckily so, uh, escaped any serious injury. So uh, good to see a little bit of comedic banter there from the Aussie Stingers. Great, fun-loving bunch of, uh, of, of sports women, and uh, well done to them. I think, Mossy, look, they, they came four, as Cal mentioned in the sports wrap, fourth for the Stingers, eighth for the Sharks, I think they're just holding their cards close to their chest and they will come out and I think both will medal at the Rio Games. Well, speaking of medals and uh, bearing things on your chest, over there at the FINA World Championships, the mighty Dolphins, that's right, our swim team, bagged a few medals there, mate. I guess the question is, do we get enough? Oh, look, I think we just got enough. Um, seven gold, uh, very, very comprehensive showing there. Only second behind the USA on the overall medal tally. And I think, again, we, we didn't want to show them everything that we had at this stage, and I think we'll, we'll easily trounce them. When we get the missile, Magnuson, he'll come back into the squad. But, uh, look, it was all about the backstrokers. Uh, em, Emily Seabomb, and what a great name that is for, for swimming and for sport swimming. in general. Made for swimming. Great Twitter handle, actually, Emma, MC Bomb. And uh, Mitch Larkin as well. So between them, four golds in backstroke events, and you, and you can say they went back-to-back to back-to-back. Uh, back back. So, uh. look... Aussies are just dominating, uh, uh, getting involved, getting 
getting out there, getting excited on our backs. We, we perform so well on our backs, mate. It's fantastic. <laughs> Well, Robbo, speaking of water, mate, it has been in the news this weekend. I'm absolutely filthy about it. The water quality over there in Rio, uh, mate, is it going to be up to scratch uh, by the time we get around to uh, the Rio Games next year in August? Mate, a lot of people are very concerned about this issue. It's got the potential to derail the entire Games. Uh, people we've seen reports of serious gastro bugs as a result of coming into contact with this suspect water. Uh, mate, I'm keen to get over there and see it myself, uh, but look, some of the things and reports we've seen, well, we've had reports of, uh, look, this is Pele's uh, shin guard washing up, we've had tennis rackets, we've had uh, all sorts of debris. Mike, Michael Clark's bat exactly. just washed up. Yeah, what's well, yeah. going cheap now. Aaron Royal, uh, that's his helmet, that washed up a little bit later on. Um, actually, while while the triathlon test event was going on, Mossy, uh, Aaron Royal, he was out at the front there qualifying for the Games, we got our man Courtney Atkinson uh, to do a little bit of research for us. He hung up the back. He ended up only finishing 42nd. But why he finished so far back was that we got him to scoop up a couple of samples of the water along the way. And look, this is from the north end of Copacabana Beach, Mossy. Yours is taken from the south. I don't see too much difference between them. I can see through mine. Okay, um, what about you, mate? Mate, I can't really see much at all. <laughs> but I, think, I think we can get through there. Okay, yeah. is there a camera on the other side of that? Yes, I believe so. Now, mate, what do you, what do you think? Is it as bad as they're all saying? Let's try it. Let's find out. How was it? It's pretty good. Good. Yeah, mate, I'm, I'm all there, that's for and sure. And the gastro, that's okay. <laughs> 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 oh, look out. Here we go. Round undies for Mossy. Well, look, mate, what do you reckon? What are they going to do? I mean, that, as we've said, that doesn't look too bad. They've got a year to go. They can, they can clean it up. They maybe import a bit of water. That's what I'm thinking, mate. Stockton Beach, 32 k's. We've got plenty of sand. They can filter it out as well. So, look, the water quality won't be an issue over there in Rio. So the European handballers, you can rest assured that your showers will be perfect. And Mossy, I'm just thinking in the Athletes Village, next to the condom uh, dispensary, you just have iodine tablets, and that keeps the water safe for everyone. Genius, Robertson. Perfect. Absolutely genius. Hi, guys. I'm Sally Pearson, and you're watching Mossy and Robbo's Fun and Games. <laughs> yes. Now, the bus to Beijing has yes. been awarded. So the Aussies, the uh, the flame. All aboard. Yeah, absolutely. They're going over there to Beijing for the World Championships. Yes. And uh, they, not too far away, they'll be stoked. Now, exactly. We've already got some of the athletes. They've got their Rio qualifiers under their belts. But we're looking for big things here. Mossy over in the bird's nest in Beijing. Uh, it's not the water quality that's questionable over there, mate. It's the air quality with uh, world record smog levels over there. But let's see how our athletes go. And all the best to the Aussie flame in action in Beijing and uh, mate it'll be great to be on that bus we're sending we're not going to be there ourselves unfortunately but we're sending our great mate Jumpy he'll be over there and if you watch the uh, the footage of the of the games over there of the of the champs well I reckon you'll see Jumpy popping up left right and centre well that's all we've got time for this week guys we, we urge you to get right behind Australia and come with us on Fun and Games TV and I tell you what Robert it's all fun and games until you get the old out for 60 <laughs>